Hello everybody, welcome back to Tin Man Collections. And today, yes, we're back in the black and white mode because I'm starting back up reading these again. So, I'm, the chapter that's in here is a short one, so it's not going to be as long as the mother ones are. But I thought I'd go ahead and do this one today, knock it out, and then do the mother ones some other day. But anyway, let's get to it. The date of the occurrence is 1990 at Rogue River, Oregon, and this is the, they saw Sasquatch, but anyway, uh, so here we go. My husband and I live on property outside of Rogue River City where we raised 11 children. First of all, 11 children, hmm. hats off to you, but anyway, that's a lot of mouths to feed, but anyway, um, you know what I mean, Oof. I don't know if I can handle it, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, we had just finished building a horse corral for a new pony out of our own fell logs when we had when he had to be out of town on, on business. One evening our great Danes started barking frantically and when I let them in the house they were visibly shaken at the same time our goats, peacocks and other animals were going, just going crazy. And that's a fact. Animals can go crazy. Even a getting a Great Dane scare, so that tells you it was something bigger scaring them, but anyway. Since the children and I were home alone, I quickly made sure everyone was inside and locked the doors. It wasn't long before we heard something on two feet walking around our house. It would stop every few steps and make a sound that was, a, that was similar to a gorilla beating his chest. Yep, that's probably a mad one then. And then the trees near the house started shaking, like something was pushing the branches. I'm not sure how long this went on, but it seemed like a long while, and we were very frightened. I'll be too if you start seeing all that. And if it ain't no wind moving, that's unnatural. But anyway, it seemed like whatever it was was extremely angry. Yeah. When the noises and footsteps finally stopped, the children and I took turns keeping watch of our second story windows until morning. When we went outside that morning, the new horse pen had been completely destroyed. Every single log had been snapped into pieces and we found the pony unharmed down in the meadow. We walked up into the woods behind the house to see if there was any sign of what our visitor had been. First of all, I'm glad that pony survived. Okay, <laughs> because if that big fool was coming in there for the pony. That's a murdering son of a gun. You know what I mean? But he had to break the darn pony pen. Good lordy. That tells you how strong they are. Anyway. And also be careful if you try to find any. In the spots where the ground was soft, we found some very large footprints. About seven feet up in one of the trees where we spotted what looked like hair. Seven feet up in the tree. Oh, God. That tells you it's a large one. You better get out of there. One of the boys climbed up the tree and brought the reddish brown colored hair down with him. I contacted a friend of mine that had a connection with Southern Oregon University and he agreed to take the hair sample to a biology lab they have on campus. It was determined to be actual hair from an unknown species. They were all baffled. I'll be too. But anyway, you got some proof right there. The Bigfoot. I had also talked to one of my neighbors about this incident. That same night, she heard or had her several ear piercing screams that she described as hair raising. And like I said, if I hear something like that at night, I'd be like, yeah, I better grab a gun. But anyway. Two weeks later, two of my daughters had gone horseback riding up into the mountains behind our house. The horses began getting nervous and spooked before. They had gotten far. As the girls started looking around to see what was bothering the horses, they heard some cracking sound in the, some bushes. And if I was horseback riding, I'd be carrying a rifle, bowie knife, just to be on the safe side, you know what I mean? And a, maybe a handgun or something, like a revolver. But anyway, as they looked in that direction, they saw a creature that was as tall as they were when sitting on their horses. They only saw a glimpse of it as it was walking away. They described it having reddish brown fur and a round head. 
this was the last time any of us saw the creature, and I'm not sure if my husband believes our Sasquatch story, but he did see the results of what it did to our new corral. And if that don't, if that don't, um, what's the word? You know, like arouse his suspicion about that or making you believe in you, then he's stupid. But anyway, but if he saw the damage, then yes. Shortly before this incident, there was some logging going on in the mountains behind us, and I can't help but think that perhaps the logging activity disturbed and angered the creature, causing it to leave its cave or whatever it shelters in and vent its frustration on us. Yep, that's probably it too, because uh, they just don't like their home getting torn down. I mean, people just keep logging stuff. But anyway, uh, this place, and the person that wrote in was Diane Johnson. I don't know if you're still around or yet, but um, in Rogue River, Oregon. But thanks for telling these people your story. Mm. All right, I told you it was a short one, but anyway. Yeah, if um, my family said they saw a reddish brown creature or whatever color of creature just tearing up the place and hearing screams at night, then yes, I believe them. We'll be armed to the teeth. Okay, but anyway, that's just me. But anyway, uh, that's gonna be it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on those post notifications, and I'll see you next time in the next video.